Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, and if you are new here, hi! My name is Natasha, and it's fantastic to have you here. For today's video, we are counting down my personal top 10 tarot deck releases of 2021. These are all decks that I have unboxed or flipped through on my channel of this year, and I would love to share my thoughts and opinions as to why they made it to my list. I have a really hard time choosing favorites, and so this was pretty difficult for some of them, but I hope you enjoy, and let me know if your favorite deck of the year made it to the list. Coming in at number 10, we've got The Labyrinth Tarot by Minerva Siegel and art by Thomas Heho. Published by Insight Editions, it retails for $24.99 in the U.S. and $33.99 in Canada. Canada. The reason why it is number 10, it's not because I don't love it, because I do, that's why it is on the list. I don't find myself uh, pulled toward using it as often as I would like. Um, there's really nothing wrong with this deck. I feel like it is incredibly creative. It has a lot of fun images. Um, it's just very nostalgic, so I really do love every little image here, but it is a pip deck, and I myself don't really get drawn to a pip style deck as often as I would more of a full scene deck. So that is why it is on the bottom tier. Um, it is a beautifully done deck, like I said, but I also have like a little bit of an issue with how it shuffles. Um, it's for some reason, it feels like the cards like to stick together. And again, it could just be that I haven't used it quite enough to get the wear and tear in there. But for that reason, too, I don't find myself getting pulled to it a lot. Do you see how it kind of just sticks together a little bit? So there's nothing wrong with the deck. Um, it just, for me, is not something that I get pulled to as often as I would like. But it's definitely a fantastic deck to have in your collection if you are a Bowie fan, if you are this movies fan. It just brings back a lot of fun memories for me and the guidebook is really nice. So if this is right up your alley, I highly suggest checking it out. I have been um, becoming a big fan of Minerva's uh, decks lately. She's been putting out a lot of really cool ones. So with that being said, this is my number 10. What do you guys think about this deck? Is it in your collection already or are you um, going to pick it up? And if not, let me know why. So I will see you in number nine. My number nine is The Tarot of Curious Creatures. This is by Chris Ann, published by Hay House, retailing for $26.99 in the U.S. and $35.99 in Canada. This is just a fun, just well done deck. I really do enjoy this so much. Um, the book is really great. It goes into some really good messages there for every single card. There's also some um, fun intuitive spreads here. Very, very fun. I didn't think I was going to like this deck when it first came out, but um, I have been loving Chris Ann's decks for quite some time and I had to try it out. So this is very gentle. It's very fun. It's very creative. I just really love the images. It's it's just one of those like bizarre decks that you either really, really love or you just do not vibe with at all. And it's just been really fun working with it. It's not at the top of my list because I do have others that beat it out. Um, but I just really enjoy the imagery. I really enjoy the quirkiness of it, the whimsicalness of it, and I like the different animals that are present. And I also like that there's two different fool cards. I thought that was really fun because, you know, the um, Major Arcana goes in cycles, and so this is you starting out, and then this is after you start your cycle, or s finish your cycle and go through it again, if that makes sense. So it's really fun. It's a great price point for what it is, and it shuffles really nice. Let me show you that real fast. 
it's just really um, a great size. It's beautifully done with the artwork, but it is one that, like I said, is kind of a niche deck where uh, you either love it or you just don't like it at all. So let me know if this is one that you have purchased, if this is in your collection, or if this has made your top tarot decks for this year down in the comments section below. Coming in at number eight, we have the Mystical Medleys, a vintage cartoon tarot. This is by Gary Hall and it is published by Liminal 11. It retails for $26.95 in the US and $40.50 in Canada. The reason it is on the lower end of my list here is only because I've had this for just like a week now. So I haven't really been working with it as much as I have the other decks, but I was just so drawn to this deck from the beginning. I love its quirkiness. I love that it's based on the rubber hose animation. I love the packaging. I mean, it's just so fun. So I, I had to include it. <laughs> It's just well written as well. It's not too in depth, but it's just enough to get you started. I feel like this is more of a deck for, uh, again, like a specific niche group of people who really love the style of animation slash cartoons, um, as well as this deck feels a little sarcastic at times too. It's very fun and different and unique, and I really do enjoy reading with it when I have. It does have two extra cards. It has a happy squirrel and a sad squirrel, which I feel like you can kind of use them for indicators of how, whatever you want, but like the just just different quirkiness of this is just so much fun. It shuffles great. I mean, it reminds me of a lot of different characters over the years of cartoons. It's just really, really fun. It shuffles nice too. Uh, the cardstock is really great. It doesn't um, feel too stiff to where you can't shuffle it or have difficulty shuffling it. It's just very, very smooth, very nice and fun. So I really <laughs> have been enjoying the messages I've been getting. I love just the audacity of this deck. It's just really fun. The cards don't feel intimidating. It does feel sort of on the line of gentle, but like tell it like it is. So that is why this is my number eight. Do you own this deck or is it something that you're excited to pick up? Let me know. All right, for number seven, we have MJ Cullinane's for Haxa Tarot. Um, it's lower on my list only because there are so many others that beat it out, but I absolutely love this deck. It is gorgeous. I believe it retails for $40. And again, it's a little bit lower on my list too, because with her decks that aren't manufactured mainstream, they take time for her to do like another round of decks too. So if you miss out on the first edition, you have to wait until the second or etc. editions come out. So that's why it's a little bit lower too. Um, but Regardless, this is just beautiful. It's like very, very gentle, but also it is very um, poignant. And the guidebook is beautiful. It's just, ah, oh, I just love it. Um, it does have weight to it when you read with it. So it does do the job of being a gentle deck, but it has that backup of that weight of the message behind it as well. So um, very meaningful uh, interpretations uh, throughout this deck. It's just beautifully done, beautifully um, rendered. I just, I there's something about this art style that my heart just longs for it. You know, it's very fantastical, but gentle, nurturing feeling, a lot of feminine energy in this deck. Uh, it doesn't feel scary, intimidating, or anything like that, and it shuffles beautifully. Um, it is a larger, more oracle-sized deck, and I mean, look at that back. Oh, it's just so well done. It's beautiful. It's a different style of deck from her. And I've been enjoying reading with it. Um, it definitely tells it like it is, tells you what you need to know, but like with that hint of nurturing behind it. 
Like, yeah, sometimes your days might be a little difficult, but here's what you can focus on instead. Um, here's what you need to know. And I don't believe there's any reversals, uh, reverse meanings in this deck. No. Um, but it's just really well done. I enjoy it, but it's lower on my list simply because it's a little bit more of an expensive deck and it's going to be a little bit harder to purchase. That is all. Um, and other decks have beat it out. So <laughs> um, I highly recommend it if you are into fantasy, fairy, um, sprite-like beings, as well as more of a divine feminine deck. This is a beautifully done one. So that is my number seven. <laughs> my number six is the Macabre Tarot by Samantha West. This is published by Rockpool Retailing for $34.95 in the US and $25 in the UK. This deck I thought was going to be a gimmick. I thought I wasn't going to like it, but oh my gosh, what a fun deck. It is ridiculously quirky as far as the packaging goes, because if you have not seen this video, it has a noise when you open it. <laughs> so yes, you could say it's excess packaging, but it's really well done. Um, the deck is just perfect for shadow work. If you are looking for a, um, specific shadow work deck, this is it. It's very well done for that. Um, the art is intimidating in a little bit of a way, as far as there's some interesting figures that you see in this deck, but it's just so fun in a, a gothic kind of macabre way. And I think if you are drawn to that, this is going to be a perfect deck for you. I say it's awesome for shadow work because it is, but you can use it as an everyday deck if this is your aesthetic, if this is something that you enjoy. And honestly, I have been loving using it. Um, I thought there were going to be a lot more intimidating um, and scary in, for me personally, uh, images. And honestly, I vibe with them all. I think um, we all have that dark side that enjoys a little bit of the twisted. And this is definitely one of those. So um, a very, very fun deck. I love the packaging. And look, it's got the gold foiling. So very, very fun to use. Um, if you're using it as an everyday deck, but it's very poignant when you use it for shadow work too. Um, and I think it is important to do shadow work. So if this is a deck that you think would work for you, I highly recommend it. Um, I think it's worth the price because it is a fun packaged gift set, I guess you would call it. Um, it makes a great gift for those uh, people in your life that know that they do um, divination and uh, like the macabre. It's just really fun. It's quirky. And I'm going to probably be saying those words a lot um, for all of these decks. But what a fun, different and unique deck. So let me know what you think about this one down in the comments. All right, we have come to the top five. And number five is Ask the Witch. This is by Francesca Mattinoni and illustrated by Simone Pace. It is published, uh, oh, there it is, Red Wheel, and it retails for $24.95 in the US. So this is a more recent deck that I purchased and did a review on. I like the packaging and I just love how it's all put together. I will say that it's a little inconvenient to have the deck in another tuck box there, but you can easily remedy that and not use the tuck box. But the quality is great. I think the one complaint that people were um, talking about is the backs don't really match with the uh, theme of the deck. But to me, that's not a big deal. It shuffles really nice. It's um, a thicker card stock. It will um, be a little bit stiffer. Not as stiff as the modern day witch deck, but it shuffles really, really nice. And I love the theme of it. And the art style is so unique and different and fun. 
and I just have really been enjoying reading with it. It's all about different witches um, that we have heard of and know of through the major arcana and then the minor arcana are just um, non-gender specific witches. And I mean, look at that Wheel of Fortune. How fun. So the color schemes are very vibrant and very bright. It does remind me of the modern day witch deck in that regard and the color schemes. But other than that, um, it's just very unique feeling. Almost feels like a comic book or an animation video. And the book is really great too. We have everything about the witch that's featured as well as um, what it means as the energy of the card as well as keywords for positive or negative and you can use that with um, upright or reversals. And I thought it had some um, spreads as well but lots of information in here. I feel like it's very beginner friendly and um, let's see I think yeah we have the card of the day three card spread witches harvest here and then if you go into the back of the book and you pull the card, you can find it in here and there's a little message from that specific witch. So that's been fun to see and learn too. I really have been enjoying this deck. So I just have been really enjoying it and I know I've said that like a million times. So that's my number five. Let me know what you think and I will see you in number four. All right, my number four is Orion's Animal Tarot by Ambie Sun, published by Rockpool, retailing for $26.95 in the U.S. and $21.99 in the U.K. This deck uh, was an independent deck before it got mass produced, and I have been just in awe over it. It is beautifully done. The guidebook is gorgeous. It's got a ribbon, like the packaging is really, really nice, but look at the art style. All different animals, just beautifully done. Um, and also it shuffles like a dream and it has a silver foil. It's just so beautiful shuffles so nice and working with it has been wonderful um, it definitely is a deck that I recommend using the guidebook alongside it even if you are a seasoned tarot reader because it goes through why uh, they chose that specific animal and how it relates to the card's energy. Also, you have upright keywords and reverse keywords. It does have a blurb about what it means when that card is reversed as well. And then if you look into the very front of each section, so each suit um, and then the major here, you find more information on the animal as well that is featured in that card. It has spreads. We have a single card, a three card, uh, the serious spread, Celtic cross. I think that was it. Yeah. And it's just so well done. If you are a beginner or any level, you can use this deck. But like I said, I highly, highly, highly recommend having this guidebook right next to you when you use it, just simply because of all of the work that goes into uh, that went into the deck and the animals and also some of the symbols, flowers, etc., that are in the card alongside. It's just so well put together. I'm very impressed with it and I really love this art style. Um, some of it reminds me of the rainbow scratch off, uh, that art style that we used to do when we were younger. Um, I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about, but um, it's just so well done. And with my love of the animal decks, this is right up my alley. So um, if you are looking for a new animal deck, if you are looking for just a unique looking deck, I highly recommend this one. It is a great, great price point for what you're getting. Uh, the quality of the cards are there and for $26.95, fantastically done. So um, was very impressed with this deck and I am so excited to feature it um, on my list here. So is this on your list? Do you own this? Let me know.
Okay, my number three, and it's another recent one that we have done on the channel, The Wandering Star Tarot by Kat Pierce. This is 80 cards in a guidebook, and the retail price is not bad either. It's $26.99 in the US and $35.99 in Canada. This deck is super beginner friendly. I love the size of it, and the packaging is like on point. There's not a lot of excess. It is just so... <laughs> fun, beautiful, and like so gentle. Um, the art style is very whimsical. It's very unique feeling. The backs are beautifully done. But what's great about this too is that if you are a beginner, it's fantastic to help you learn the tarot. There are keywords embedded into the artwork to help you with those intuitive hits if you get stuck or if you have a hard time remembering um, meanings, that sort of a thing, um, but it's not distracting. So it's very well done. I really enjoy the whimsicalness of this deck. It's beautifully done. It's diverse. There's different body types. It's just so fun and gentle. Um, I, even the more intimidating cards are gentle as well. So let me see if I can find, um, you know, just so well done. I, I, it took me so long to get my hands on this deck uh, because I feel like it's just been so popular <laughs> with everyone and I can see why. I mean, it's just beautiful. And let's see, so here's the Ten of Swords, which I rolled over <laughs> with my chair. Um, so it's not, it's not super intimidating. It's just, it feels very um, nostalgic. It feels like um, it's a deck that I may have had years ago, you know? It feels like, almost like home to me. I feel very comfortable using it. And um, I'm just so sad that I didn't have this earlier. But like I said, could not get my hands on it anywhere. So I can see why. Um, but it shuffles so nice too. The cardstock is really nice. I mean, it is Hay House cardstock, so keep that in mind. It's a little bit thicker than um, uh, normal Oracle cards that they have there. Um, and there's also two different cards added in here that um, have a yes and a no. So you can use it that way too, or you can use it with the meanings that is in the book. Um, I highly recommend you check out my unboxing video because I go in depth with all of that as well. And the guidebook has a lot of great information too. It gives you a blurb about it. There are no reversals, but you can use this, you know, however you choose to use it. It is your deck and it does have keywords and it has a quote down at the bottom for each card. So to really drive that energy home, it does have some spreads too. It has a Celtic cross, the wandering star, three card and a card a day. So I really, really, really enjoy this deck. It's been a pleasure working with it. So um, let me know what you think in the comments. It is my number three and only because two other decks released this year beat it out. Otherwise, it probably would have been my number one. My number two, The Good Karma Tarot, A Beginner's Guide to Reading the Cards by Carrie Ward. This is published by O and it retails for $24.95 in the US and $19.99 in the UK, illustrated by Amy Blackwell. This deck hits different. It is so gentle. The book is fantastic for beginners. It is big. It is bold. It is color. Um, there's a bunch of information and um, how to work with this deck. And honestly, so many spreads. It's just beautifully done. I'm really impressed with it. My only complaint is this dang packaging, <laughs> but I can understand why, because you have to fit this beautiful deck or beautiful book in it. But I, my, one of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to deck packaging is a split, uh, pa split deck packaging. Um, strictly because 
I, you know what, honestly, there is no real big reason why it's a pet peeve. It's just a pet peeve. But here's the back. It's a gloss. It's a nice size. Um, it's very well put together. Shuffles beautifully. And I love the art style. And like I said before, it's a very gentle deck. It reads so well for beginners. Whatever level you are at, this deck is stunning. So inclusive and you know it just fits the energy of all of the the cards wonderfully i just have had the best time reading with this deck and literally that is my only complaint is the dang packaging everything else i'm here for like look at this devil card it is not even that scary um i mean technically yeah you can say that's a little intimidating but you get what's going on with the energy um, all of these are very self-explanatory when it comes to the images. However, um, the if you are unsure about what's going on in the cards, the book is fantastic. So if you are starting out, I love this for a beginner deck. I feel like all of the minor cards are very well done. And I just love that like, it's super inclusive. It's so it, I just love it. Different body sizes, like I said, different hair colors, different skin colors. I mean, look at that death card. It is so beautiful. And we've got handsome men, just fantastically done. I'm over the moon with this. It has been one of my go-to decks for a while now. <laughs> I love this one so much. It's just filled with wonderfully represented, um, artwork and I just absolutely adore it. One of my favorites of all time. Um, it's been a great deck to work with throughout this year and um, all ages for this deck. It's just so oh, well done. Like I said, the only complaint and issue I have is the packaging. And if that's the only complaint, we're doing fantastic. So by now, I'm probably sure that you guys know what my number one pick is. Um, but it's it, so yeah, it's probably not going to be a surprise. But I'm going to show it to you and just gush all over again. So see you in number one. It has come to the number one tarot deck favorite release of 2021. You know, you know it had to be this one. <laughs> this is the Disney Villains Tarot Deck by Minerva Siegel. It is illustrated by Ellie Goldwine. It retails for $24.99 in the US and $33.99 in Canada, published by Insight Editions. Now, listen, I am a Disney adult. I fully admit it. I love this deck so much. And it's not only because it's a Disney deck, because let's be real, if it were any other Disney character, I would still love it. It's so well done. The packaging is beautiful. The guidebook is great. It has a ribbon, which I didn't use, um, but it's just beautifully done. There are villains in here that I didn't think that she was going to include, and I'm so happy she did. Uh, hashtag Joanna is a queen. <laughs> this guidebook is fun. It's got upright meanings, reverse meanings. It tells you about the uh, character in the deck, and it's just so Oh, I just love it. There are also some spreads. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, they're in the back. That's right. Um, we've got, which have been fun to do. I've been using the spreads um, for my own personal use, and it's been really interesting and fun. The poison apple spread. We've got the diamond in the rough spread. And then Ursula's cauldron spread. This one was interesting. Um, and then let's just talk about the cards real fast. The cardstock is fantastic as far as flexible. It's been holding up really well considering I've been using this like so much. I love the back. It's not gaudy. Um, sometimes when uh, we're talking about like a specific well-known um, theme or character or anything like that, sometimes it can be overdone in the background or the art. It is not in this deck. Look at Madame Mim! I mean, really, we've got, oh, wow, they're right by each other, um, her transformation one. Um, we've got 
all the greats here. And it's not just a pip deck, which Minerva has had um, in the past with her other uh, big decks. Um, some of them are a little bit kind of pippish, but for the most part, everything makes sense. Oh, I love it. Um, so the, the one takeaway that I have with this deck that I wish would have been improved on was the suit of the cups. It was a little lackluster for me, but everything else was really done well. The characters were chosen really well. Um, I mean, I can't. <laughs> Some of these are right by each other. That's interesting. Okay, so um, very well done. It's a trip, man, down nostalgia lane. And I am so happy every time I use this. It's not intimidating. And what I love about it too, it's fantastic for your inner child work. If you have grown up on Disney and love Disney and it, it was a part of your childhood, then this will definitely be a deck to use for your inner child work and ask your inner child what it, you know, needs, what it might want to work on. Um, it's just been so fun. And since you know the characters and their motivations, the energy of the card makes sense too. You can relate it a lot to that. Um, I mean, that's a villain that you don't normally see all the time. It's just so interesting to go through these and see who was picked for what there's joanna we love a queen <laughs> get those eggs girl <laughs> um it's just so much fun i mean love that so and then here's my favorite <laughs> um just really wonderfully done i could not enjoy this deck anymore I hope that eventually a bigger, um, more um, diverse Disney character deck is done. Um, but I could not be more happier with the result of this. I was not expecting um, uh, the, the villains or to have the minors be done in such a nice way. So like I said, it shuffles really nicely. It reads really nicely. Um, I didn't have an issue with this deck uh, cardstock as much as I did with the Labyrinth one. So maybe um, it is just more of an issue with me using the Labyrinth deck more um, to kind of wear it out a little bit. Um, so yeah, that's my number one pick. I'm so I'm so giddy over this. And I know a lot of you can understand why. Um, but yeah, those are my top picks for 2021. There are some that didn't make the cut, um, but also there are a lot of decks that I didn't get to that were new releases this year as well. So if you did not see your favorite deck on here, let me know which one it is down in the comment section because I would love to check it out. And as always, if there is a deck that you want me to check out, let me know. I'm trying to compile um, a quicker way like Google Docs to, to make it more easier and accessible for everybody to just um, add their requests in. So um, I'll keep you guys updated that updated with that as we go along. But like I said, let me know your top decks of the year um, that were released this year. And I would be interested to, to compare notes. So if you've enjoyed this video, if it helped you in any way, let me know by liking the video. If you haven't yet subscribed, I would love to have you here. And as always, check out the links in the description box. I have my link tree in there that will take you to all of my social media, as well as my Etsy shop where I do private readings. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I appreciate each and every one of you, and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.